I think it's fair to say that cosmetic customization options to most gaming folk are always a very welcome thing in games. That is, if its implementation isn't structured around predatory loot box or gacha mechanics, ridiculously exorbitant price tags, or extreme unlock requirements intentionally designed to take an unreasonable amount of time in hopes that players will get frustrated and spend money instead. But don't worry, Nintendo would never stoop that low, right? As you probably know, fighting games are a genre that typically have many cosmetic options for its playable characters, usually taking the form of alternate palette swaps or costumes. Being able to customize the character you play as, even if it's just swapping between a couple of simple outfits, is just inherently a really enjoyable aspect of the fighting game experience. Finding a certain outfit or color scheme that you feel represents you, makes you and your friends laugh, or just looks cool is a really fun part of the experience. And that's definitely true for Super Smash Bros as well. Anyone who has played one of these games before, even if it was just once in their life, probably found themselves picking a favorite look for their character. I'm willing to bet that you watching this right now either is or has a family member or friend who is a blue Kirby main. I mean, not that there's anything wrong with that, it's just an observation. But for Smash, the appeal goes even further beyond, I feel. Being a celebration of Nintendo and, well, honestly, just gaming as a whole where we're at in the series now, uh, the process of alternate colors and costumes were used to not only dress up them characters in funny looking clothing, but also pay tribute and references to moments from all over each franchise's respective histories. You have super iconic looks from characters past games, like Samus's gravity suit from many of the Metroid games, Toon Link's colored tunics from Four Swords, Little Mac's pink hoodie from that one cutscene in the original Punch-Out, and even the more obscure deep cuts like Marth's original color scheme from the very first Fire Emblem game, and Mario's red, white, and blue outfit from NES Open Tournament Golf. I'm not sure why an Italian man created in Japan would ever need to show US patriotism, but okay. Most of these cool referential alts were added later in the franchise's life, particularly in Smash Ultimate. And with just how many thought out, lovingly crafted ones there are in just this one game, naturally the bar from past titles was raised and an expectation was set. Because of that precedent, however, some characters' alt selections kind of suck actually, or at least are a lot more disappointing in comparison. There's a pretty wide margin when it comes to the quality of each fighter's alt wardrobes. There's the characters that are damn near perfect, with great color variety, appealing looks across the board, and a ton of solid references. There's the characters that sort of fall in the middle with some really solid ones, but also a few not so solid ones. And then there's the characters that are just a fucking letdown, man. <laughs> Lucario, Pac-Man, Cloud, and Sonic are some of the most notorious examples, very samey color color schemes, hardly any solid references, and some kind of icky looking ones if I'm being honest. And no, Cloud's single cool Advent Children outfit doesn't excuse the six other ridiculously boring brown ass outfits he's plagued with. So in this video, and hopefully series if you guys are into it enough, I'm going to be creating a new set of eight alts for characters I think could use it. I'll be keeping what worked, replacing what didn't, and overall making slight changes with the goal of fulfilling as much missed potential as possible. Now I know I'm not even remote close to being the first person to make this sort of video, but I'm taking a slightly different approach to the whole concept, as I'll explain here shortly. <laughs> yeah, I'm not like other girls. But first, I'd like to thank the channel's very first sponsor, Surfshark. For those of you that aren't in the know, Surfshark is a VPN service that allows you to browse, search, and travel the internet safely, securely, and with more content accessible to you along the way. It encrypts all your personal data, including download history, passwords, sent or received files, general online traffic, basically all of that sensitive stuff you wouldn't want easily accessible to hackers, criminals, or even more commonly, huge evil corporations who secretly steal and sell your personal data. This goes for online activity at home and even in more vulnerable public spaces like shady coffee shop Wi-Fi. If I'm out at a cafe chugging coffee and looking at cool pictures of Donkey Kong on my devices, I'll be fully protected from any Riddler looking fella who might try to sneak a few peeks of those sweet monkey JPEGs through the use of nasty hackery. On top of this incredible protection, Surfshark allows you to have more entertainment at your fingertips than you ever would have had before downloading. Region-blocked content on streaming services like Netflix and YouTube can be sidestepped for access to certain shows and movies that would only be available in certain regions otherwise. Here in the US, for example, Netflix doesn't have Sam Raimi Spider-Man, but if I want to watch Sam Raimi Spider-Man, all I have to do is switch my location to a country that has Sam Raimi Spider-Man, like Canada, and now I can watch Sam Raimi Spider-Man. Surfshark is super easy to use, but if you ever need help for any reason, they've even got 24-7 live chat support to talk directly to you as well. That's 
pretty cool. If this all sounds pretty cool to you, you can head over to surfshark.deals slash and use my promo code bizibazow for a big ol' 83% off in three completely free months. The link is in the description. Thank you Surfshark for sponsoring and let's get back to the video. All right, really quick before the ground rules, some terms I feel I should clarify. When I say alts and alternates, I'm using a blanket term for any of the seven looks you can swap between for any given fighter that aren't their default look. Recolors are the alts that only change the color palettes or basic textures of the model. And costumes are specifically the alts in these selections that change the outfit, design, or overall model in any way for the character. There are also recolors of costumes, for instance. Here's Ike, here's Ike's costume, here's a recolor of his costume. Oh, also there's some examples that kind of fall between the two. There are those like Sonic's alts that replace the little wrist part of his gloves with different armbands, Pac-Mans that add the little wings to his shoes, and the Pokemon ones that switch around hats. Yes, you could technically call any alt with any change to the default model a costume based on my criteria, but to me these are still very much recolors in spirit. The changes need to be a little more significant for me to call a costume. If you disagree with that classification, that's okay by the way, I'm literally just clarifying all this so we're all on the same page here. As the great Goomba figurehead once said, um, those haters try to troll me, but those shrooms... Okay, onto the ground rules for real this time. All of these statements should be true for every single alt that I create, no matter what. Number one, it has to look good. You'd think this would be a given, but as I'd mentioned several times before, Smash Ultimate has some color palette swaps that are a little on the unappealing side, like Link's Royal Guard alt, Pitt's Christmas color alt, Lucas's blue-orange striped shirt alt, at least all in my opinion, of course. Determining whether something looks appealing or not is a fairly subjective process, so just keep that in mind that this will all be based on my own personal judgment. Number two, it can't interfere with actual gameplay in any way. It's super important that these characters play the exact same for every single one of their alts as they are just cosmetic changes. The hitbox will be the exact same for every alt as well, so we need to make sure that their model isn't changed so much that the two wouldn't line up during gameplay. That's why they made Steve's Enderman alt look like this instead of... Three, it can only reference games or content that existed at the time of said character's development. For the base roster and the two fighter passes, I'm only working with material that was announced or had been previously at the time of the their respective announcements and releases. So no Dread Suit for Samus, no Phantom Meta Knight, etc. As cool as it would have been to have gotten DLC or something later on in Smash Ultimate's life that added more alts and costumes and such, the angle I personally wanted to take with this video is imagining a hypothetical universe where Nintendo had a little more going on for alts as they existed upon Ultimate's release. Four, it has to be something that Nintendo would or could realistically accomplish. Although I am naturally going to be idealizing this new imaginary development process a little bit, I still want to work with a roughly realistic Nintendo mindset. Things like Square Enix's and Sega's weirdly strict stipulations on what Sakurai and the team could and couldn't do with their characters will be disregarded as, you know, that's the main issue with those characters' alts and is what we're setting out to fix. However, I'm still going to use some restraint when it comes to what things I will be referencing in order to produce alts that could realistically exist if it weren't for those silly little legal hangups. For instance, a Super Mario Bros. Super Show King Koopa costume for Bowser, a King Harkinian recolor for Ganondorf, a Hero Brian skin for Steve. Amazing ideas, just not something I could see them doing, even ignoring the legal mumbo jumbo. But I don't know, maybe Nintendo will surprise us one day. Five, it can only reference content within the character's own series. Pretty self-explanatory, alts can't reference anything outside of their character's series. Captain Falcon isn't going to have a bad box art Mega Man costume, Charizard isn't going to have a Valu recolor, and Ness isn't going to have a Frisk alt or something. Six, it can't reference any existing fighter already in the game. Again, pretty obvious, no need to reference a character if they're represented as a fighter in the game already. This is why these alts were replaced. Seven, similarly, it can't reference the same thing as another character's alt. No pointless double dipping. You know, like how Mario and Luigi both still have the same Waluigi palettes for some reason. Just let Luigi have it. Can this poor man have nothing of his own? Okay, there are all the concrete rules, but here are just a few more guidelines and straight 
thoughts before we get into it. When selecting costumes and alt references, the thing I'm going to look for first are any looks that the character in question has had in their past games, prioritizing the more well-known and iconic ones first. This is a given, as Ultimate pretty much does the same thing already. However, sometimes the dev team will omit incredibly iconic looks for certain characters for seemingly non-existent or stupid reasons. For instance, one that comes up a lot in discussion is Mario's fire recolor that was obliterated in Ultimate despite being in Brawl and Smash 4 and, you know, being one of Mario's most iconic outfits ever since the first Super Mario Bros. No big deal though, right? We have fucking war crime Mario. I, I hate it! Not every character will have enough reference material in this department, so when those are exhausted, we can start looking at similar characters from their franchises, other characters in general, or hell, items, UI elements, even thematic color themes if we get real desperate. All as long as it's iconic, well-known, and can be identified by most people familiar with the games. I'll definitely be using some more obscure source material for some, but only when either all the big iconic ones have been accounted for or if we're in need of some color variety. And yeah, color variety is another thing that I'll be putting heavy emphasis on. I want to cover as much of the color wheel as possible for each fighter's alts, at least that's a rough goal. A lot of the time it's not really possible to make every single slot a completely different color from one another, for reasons you'll see as we go, but above all else, every alt should at least be visually distinct enough to tell who's who at a glance during gameplay. Um, <clears throat> I want to reiterate that this whole process won't be the exact same for every single character. These are sort of the broad strokes I want to cover before we jumped in. We'll cover the specifics of each fighter's process as we go along. Don't you worry your little oom jammer lamey pajamas, my friend. One final thing we should keep in mind is how alternate costumes are implemented. The Smash team are usually pretty deliberate with how they utilize them. These things aren't just thrown in willy-nilly, which, you know, makes sense as changing the 3D models themselves in drastic ways takes a lot more time and effort than simple recolors. About 65% of the roster have no costumes at all, only color swaps. Only two characters have nothing but costumes. That being Bowser Jr. and Inkling, and the rest have at least one to their name with variation. I'm going to try to give as many characters at least one alternate costume if I can, but that will definitely not be possible for a lot of cases. S sorry, Lucario. Since some characters will be fine as is and won't need changing, I want to make sure all these new ones will still fit in. If they're hypothetically existing in the same game, they need to be codified in some way. I'm going to make sure they all fall into one of the five existing categories seen in the game, minus a few outliers. We have five default recolors, one costume and one costume recolor, three default recolors, one costume and three costume recolors, five default recolors, two separate costumes, one default recolor, three separate costumes and a recolor for each, and three default recolors and four separate costumes. This one technically doesn't exist in the game already, but it would be the exact same amount of work as the last one, so it's fair game. <sighs> okay, finally done explaining all of that. I'm sorry for making this fucking geometry class. To start off, I'm only going to be covering two characters, but for future episodes, if y'all are interested enough for me to continue the series, of course, I will probably be covering about three or four per episode. Okay, let's dive in. Finally, at like halfway through the video, I'm, I'm so sorry. Start battle! Young Link! Young Link doesn't have a terrible alt selection. The main thing he's got going for him is his surprisingly very appealing color selection. These pink and white ones in particular look really nice. I love these a lot. However, only half of these are references, and that's because these were his original ocarina alts he had in Melee. The only thing you could maybe parse from the others are vague references to the four Termina regions in Majora's Mask, but who knows if this was actually the intent. You know us Smash fans and our wild imaginations. And yeah, Young Link's representation in Smash is is pretty much exclusively ocarina based, which is something many people have complained about and I definitely agree. So how about we sprinkle in a bit more Majora's Mask into his alternates? Since Young Link is essentially representing both ocarina and Majora, or at least should, I thought it would make sense to keep his red, blue, and dark recolors, making the first four alternating slots ocarina based and then change his last four to be Majora based. That way he's got both sides to the same Tim Buckley hair coin. 
I, I take it back. For the cosmetic additions Link could have to represent Majora's Mask, I think that's pretty obvious. It's masks. There are several ways you could potentially incorporate the masks. He could have them hanging on his belts, on the side of his head, like he wears the Keaton mask in Hyrule Warriors, but I thought it would be the most interesting to have him actually wear them on his face, which I think would be super cute. What these masks would be, my mind first went to the major four masks in the game, Tiku, Goron, Zora, and Fierce Deity. However, these four masks all change Link's form one more. That's like one of the major mechanics in the game. If these were just sitting there on his face as regular human young Link, that would be a bit weird. And since we're not here to alter his actual moveset, we can't make him actually transform, obviously. So I decided to pick four of the non-transformation masks from the game instead, whilst changing the color of Link's tunic to complement them. On top of this, I thought it would be really cool if for these four alts, Link's Kukiri sword and Deku shield were replaced with a sword and shield from Majora instead, essentially giving Link an alternate costume with three other slightly altered recolors. So here are the finished ones. Young Link's first default slot is of course his green Kakiri tunic, with his Kakiri sword and Deku shield all from Ocarina of Time, starting his first four alternating slots. Skipping to his third, we have a recolor based on his red Goron tunic, also from Ocarina. Skipping to his fifth slot, we have another recolor based on his blue Zora tunic as well. Then, skipping to his seventh, as the last of the Ocarina alts, we have a recolor based on Dark Link, the shadowy echo of Link, who's a reoccurring boss across the Zelda series and also appears in Ocarina. Young Link then has an alternate costume and three recolors, giving him four Majora's Mask inspired slots. In his second slot, Link is sporting the Keaton Mask, one of the most well known of the non transformation masks. His tunic is a pink recolor that not only complements the yellow mask well, but also resembles the pink poison-filled waters of the southern swamp in Termina. Yeah, I decided to go ahead and keep the four other tunic colors. They ended up working really well for the masks I chose, and also I like the Termina regions idea. For these, Link holds the Hero Shield, the shield Link has for most of the game, and the Razor Sword, the first upgrade you can get for the Kakiri Sword in-game. I felt this one both had the best look paired with the shield, and also represented this version of Young Link the best, appearing in two pieces of promotional art for the game. Now his fourth alt, the Mask of Truth, another well-known mask from the game. I paired this one with his white alt, resembling the snow-caked landscape of the Snow Peak region, although I made it look a little more on the off-white, gray side to accent the bright white mask a little better. His sixth alt is the Stone Mask, and I don't have a visual for this one, unfortunately. I, I'm sorry, I think the file got corrupted or something. This is another well-known mask from the game that also pairs nicely with a tunic recolor, resembling the dusty rock orange of the Ikana Valley. And finally, his eighth alt, the Romani Mask. In the game, it's worn as a piece of headwear with his face showing, which I thought would be really cute. The tunic is a light blue, like the waters of Great Bay. And there we are. Given the recolors I kept, this is more of an upgrade to what we already have in the game, but I feel it's really appealing and effective. If we ever get Young Link in a future Smash game again, I really hope they just rework his moveset to be Majora's Mask based, but for Ultimate, I think something like this would have been a perfect compromise. Plus, I would use this Romani one like all the time if it existed. This is so goofy, I love it. My mom says you play video games. Do you know, um, do you know Bendy of the Ink Machine? Stop battle! Sonic! What up, Sonic Squad? Today we're doing some Destiny 2 PvP. Sonic is a character that most people can agree didn't get as much love as he should have in Smash. His moveset doesn't have a lot going on. He actually became less expressive every game since Brawl. And as I said in the beginning, his alts are kind of fucking lame. They aren't abhorrently ugly or anything, but they're super boring. All he's got are some different shades of blue fur, or quills, I guess, different shoe colors, and some altered glove cuffs with like referential table scraps, which is pretty disappointing. Sonic is way too much of a fucking icon to be shout out like this. Although I can't fix everything about his Smash implementation, I can do what I came here to do. For Sonic, I'm going to be pulling from various looks and forms he's taken throughout his games, as well as some alts based on important characters throughout the franchise. However, these will be exclusively other hedgehogs. So no echidnas, foxes, cats, uh, egged men. I see a lot of people making recolor edits based on tails and knuckles, as they are, of course, major characters 
characters in the franchise, but I don't know, they never look right to me. I feel like it just makes more sense to base them on characters that visually parallel Sonic in some way. So that's what I'll be doing instead. I'll just go ahead and get into the show and tell along the way. Sonic's first slot is obviously his modern blue appearance, originating in Sonic Adventure. This will be the first of four alternating recolor slots. His third slot is his shadow-based alt, because of course, Shadow the Hedgehog originating in Sonic Adventure 2 is a thematic and visual echo to Sonic, so it's such a given. Smash has had this black recolor since Smash 4 that understandably everyone assumed was a vague reference to him. Like, there's absolutely no red at all. If it was intentional, I'm guessing this was the result of another one of those weird rules Sega gave them. Like, they could make him black, but no red, so he didn't actually resemble Shadow. I, I don't know. But no, this one is a genuine black and red Shadow recolor, complete with even his little unique cuffs. I actually really like the idea of each recolor getting its own glove cuffs, so I kept that trend to make them just a smidge more fun. Next, his fifth alt that you can probably guess, a Silver the Hedgehog recolor. This is the time-traveling fella originating from Sonic 06, who's also remained a staple character in the series ever since. Once again, Sonic does have a gray alt that many thought to be a reference to him, but it's probably the exact same deal with the black one. This is barely a reference. Also, this is so bizarre. Sonic has an alt with gold wrist cuffs looking extremely similar to Silver's, but this isn't even the same one. It's on this light blue one. I'm, I'm, I'm vibrating here. We got all his proper colors, as well as his gold light-up cuffs. And the final of his default recolor slots, a recolor based on Sonic's werehog form from Sonic Unleashed. The colors make for a really appealing Sonic variant, and having Unleashed represented would be really neat. This alt gets little furry cuffs on his gloves instead, similar to his big puffy furry wrists that he has as the werehog. Alright, now for his full alternate costume and its recolors, which is Classic Sonic. Okay, so this would take some fine tuning and tweaking to actually be implemented in the game. Classic Sonic, as shown in Generations and Forces, is much smaller and differently proportioned than modern Sonic. But of course, the size difference in game would not work with the hitbox and everything, so to remedy this, the Classic Sonic model would have to be about as large as the regular Smash model, just taking up more of that hitbox space. So his head, body, hand, hands and feet would be larger and chunkier, but wouldn't extend past the original, meaning he would be the same relative size, but his different proportions would take up that space differently. I don't know if any of that made any sense, but if it doesn't, you can find several mods using the Generations model that do this exact thing really well to look at. Anyways, Classic Sonic has a lighter blue than Modern Sonic, which has been made even more distinct here. In game, there would also have to be a few differences in addition to Sonic himself. Classic Sonic doesn't talk, well, besides that one time, so you. his voice would be absent when using the costume, instead replacing them and his other sound effects with sounds from all of the Classic Sonic games. As well as this, I thought it would be really cool if for Sonic's Up B, the modern spring design was replaced with the old one, where it's just the solid red or yellow with the little circle star pattern removed. All right, time for the recolors. Sonic's fourth slot is this yellow recolor. Nope, not a reference to Tails, Ray the Flying Squirrel, Bark the Polar Bear, or Super Sonic. This is actually based on this yellow form of Sonic from the title screen for Sega Sonic Bros, a prototype falling block style puzzle arcade game from 1992 that went unreleased. He has Sonic's normal white gloves and red shoes as seen by the tiny sprite in game, but I decided to give him green shoes with little ring armbands to complement the yellow and give him a more distinct look. I've nicknamed him Sprite Sonic so he can be BFFs with the Sprite Climbers. Sonic's sixth alt is then, naturally, based on the red Sonic, also seen in the Sega Sonic Bros title screen. Similarly, I gave him yellow shoes and armbands to accent the red. I'll call this one, um, Sonald McDonald. What kind of fucking food should we have? Hamburger. And Sonic's eighth and final alt is a recolor based on Amy the Hedgehog, the other hedgehog from his series. Although, since this is classic Sonic, I based the colors on her classic form from her origin game, Sonic CD, with berry-ish colored shoes and green armbands. I tried to incorporate the orange in some way, but it always looked gross anyway I tried it, so I just left it out and I think it looks nice. And there. Although the classic Sonic costume implementation would take a little bit more work to get right if it was actually in the game, I think this would have definitely been doable and way better than this shoit. Whatever, even if it's not for his alternates, I just hope Sonic gets some sort of reworking in whatever the next Smash game will be. My boy deserves it. No, Chad, I'm not gonna- I'm not gonna say that! Look, 
you're throwing a tantrum, chat. I don't even understand. You're like Eggman when he loses. It's embarrassing. <laughs> okay, look, fine. You want it? You want it? Okay, here we go. Don't ask me again. <clears throat> uh, meow? See? They're fine. Are you happy? Jeez. <sighs> Well, there you go. Two characters down. Once again, I'd love to make this a series and fix even more characters alts if y'all would be interested. I have a ton of other ideas that I'm really excited about. So not to do that YouTube thing, but make sure to leave a like and drop a comment to let me know that you guys liked it. Engagement and all that helps me know the video is done well enough to continue. Also, I'd like to give a big shout out to both Oof Troop and Nozomi VA, who lent their voices for the little Young Link and Sonic voice lines respectively. Do yourself a favor and watch some of their stuff. And I'd like to give some thanks to my scrunklies over on Patreon. Thank you for supporting me. Spider Bee, Zoe Steel, Just a Penguin, Kuza, Equinox Music, Dewey, Prism, April B, Creative JK, Adelaide Parade, Malin. Aridash, Galaxy, Chico Mode, Frigid Duck, Caleb Hutchdurfer, The Siderian, Xylo, Goose Nerd, Addie Fields, Xylus, Secretly Ashlyn, and Espen. If you'd like to join these wonderful folks, you can check out my Patreon in the link in the description. Anyways, thank you guys for watching and peace out. You little shit, it's not a tumor, okay? I I'm gonna strangle your parents, okay? That's what's gonna happen to them. I'm gonna put my hands around their neck and strangle them. Tonight's homework 